Hello everybody, Steve from Dark Side of the Wall here. Welcome again to our Shining On In Lockdown vlog. We're up to episode number four and we're going to be talking drums today. Uh, firstly though, whilst these little boys are quiet, I thought I'd take the opportunity to say I hope you're all staying healthy, staying safe, staying sane even. It's important that we all keep talking and um, carry on as we, best we can until this all eases and eventually goes away. Um, Thank you for watching these vlogs, we really appreciate that. The comments are wonderful and it's interesting to get the feedback rather than just do these in isolation like we have been doing. Big thanks also to Taz for his contribution last week, it was lovely to hear from him. As I say, this week we're going to be talking drums. Over the years we've had, uh, well we're on drummer number four now. Uh, originally there was Barry Page, a uh, founder member. After Barry uh, retired from the band, his son Jody Page took over. Then, of course, we had the Coventry legend that is Ted Duggan on the drum stool for a good five years. After Ted uh, came Tony, Tony Norris, who's our present drummer, who you obviously recognise from the shows with his big smiley face, known affectionately in the band as the Tony Mater. But, um, before we talk to him, I should point out that there have been in this band a number of uh, family relationships over the years as well. We've had father and son combinations in John and Mark Wall and Barry and Jody Page. We've even had a father-daughter combination in Mick Freeman and Emily Freeman. Presently, we have a married couple combination. So, that being the case, and being as the lady concerned is my cohort in these vlogs, Louise, we thought it would make sense for her to talk to her husband, Tony, at their lovely home in Leicestershire. Over to you guys. So, uh, I'm here in the lounge in lockdown yeah. uh, with the lovely Tony Norris of Dark Side of the Wall. He's the awesome drummer uh, who's been with Dark Side since March 2015. Wow, that's gone quick, hasn't yeah, it? Very so, quick, how's yeah. it feel? Do you still enjoy doing oh, it? I, I love it. It's such a lovely feeling yeah. to, to be on stage with all you guys. It's, it's really good. Oh, lovely group of guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a great feeling on stage. Yeah. So, so tell me, when was your first gig? My first gig was um, at the Ben Hall in uh, Rugby on March 2015 when I stood in for Ted Duggan. Oh, that's right, you were yeah. adept to start um, with, weren't you? I was so scared that night. But we got through it and it, it was even filmed. I know, even, I know, I remember uh, that. Yeah, yeah, I was... Uh, I turned round and on the monitor was was a camera with like because oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there wasn't enough pressure. Yeah, on I know. Yeah. So tell tell us about when you first got started. How did you start playing? How did I start playing? Oh, yeah. I was um, eleven. Well, probably younger than that, ten, and uh, I'd play along to. The top of the box of the cushions on the floor, all shaped out in a drum kit, and the mum's knitting needles, and I'd play along. Then uh, my brother got some big cheese cartons, and we stretched some leather across and made some temporary drums, and that was really good. And then on my twelfth birthday, they bought me a a uh, a drum kit. Wow. It was Olympic gold, gold sparkle. Yeah, and the transition from the the cushions to the leather stretch drums to the Olympic kit was really easy. Well, it, it seems like it now. So you were, you were meant to play the drums, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about your first gig then? What was that? Oh, that was um, so with a band called Decimal Point, my first ever band. We were all, well, I was, I was 13. We were all around the same age. It was at a railway social club. And uh, all the families came and everything. And we went on and we did our set. We came off and the families were crying. And I thought, mm, it must have been really <laughs> bad. But apparently they were just so proud of us. And that was it. We were on the road and we gigged every weekend. It was brilliant. Because yeah. I remember you telling me a story when you, you used to sort of, didn't you used to shake your wad at the teachers? Oh, <laughs> yeah, when I was at school, I used to. Because <laughs> you were earning. They'd loads of money at the weekend and I'd go, yeah. <laughs> well, <that's it. laughs> 
<laughs> which didn't stand me in good books. <laughs> yeah, no. Looking back, it was maybe a, a wrong move. <laughs> yeah. So really, from a very young age, you were in an adult world. Yeah. Oh, you? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we, we were often on with strippers at the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we were always chaperoned. Yeah, yeah. 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 So mm. how about uh, sort of going fast-forwarding into, you know, other bands as well? So you'd kind of done a bit of an apprenticeship with... Yeah. Club yeah. bands and yeah, and then uh, moving on a few years, I joined a band called uh, Dry Ice, and uh, we, we we were doing really really well. We were ended up on new faces and stuff like that, and yeah, it was really really good. A mixture of covers and original material, and it was that doing the original material that really got me. Yeah. I'd, after Dry Ice split. I didn't want to play covers anymore. I just wanted to play original material. Yeah. And luckily, I've pretty much done that for the rest of my career. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Tone isn't only a drummer. He also plays guitar, don't you? Well, so enough, a lot of people know enough, that. enough to write a, you know, a song or two. Yeah. yeah. With um, Kafka Diva. Um, I had a couple of tracks on the first album, Big Toes and Fingers. I think Carry Me was one. And... Yeah, yeah. Dysfunctional, well, I've got four or five, which is really yeah, good. Yeah. 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 So, in a sec, you're going to take us on a bit of a run through of your, your full kit. So, tell us a bit about it. Uh, it's uh, an American kit, Ludwig, and it's a Ludwig Black Panther, made in 1970, but I actually purchased it in 1973. Right. Uh, I actually picked it up direct from the shop on the way to a gig, took my whole, the old kit in, picked up the new one, boxed, and went straight to a gig, and I unboxed it on stage. And the second I set it up and played it, I just fell in love with it. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> So you got some specific kit really solely to use in Dark Side of the Wall. Yeah, you? yes, and that they are that consists of the road toms and the SPDS and a small twelve inch splash for fearless. Yeah. Yeah. Have you purchased any other sort of symbols or anything? Yeah, else yeah, I've got some extra symbols. The thing the thing with symbols there's a lot of drummers who are of the, the opinion that your symbols all have to be the same make. Mm. And I've never been one to follow the crowd anyway, but I prefer symbols for the sound of them, not just because they're a name. So if I like a sound of the symbol, then I'll buy it. Doesn't matter if it's not the same make as the rest. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. If it obviously it's got to fit with with my sound and what I want them to be used for. You know, there's the big crashes for crescendos and things like that. softer washes from underneath, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tone will say to me, I'm going to get a new symbol and you know exactly what you want to use it for, don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's say got... that you'll hunt down that specific yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, and it'll be, and it won't be a make or... Well, I mean, I, I will have makes in mind, but it's a sound more than the name. Of course, then it's got to match, you know, go with all other symbols, but but you don't hit them all at the same time, you mm. know. And quite yeah. a lot of them are from the 70s. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I have symbols from the 70s. I have a crash ride that's from the 70s with a mini bell, and my ride symbol is from the 70s. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah. But I've had other... Symbols from the 70s that have recently cracked and mm. gone, but, you know, yeah. yeah. They're, they're under the bureau. <laughs> <laughs> no, another thing you're talking to me about, concerning playing Floyd in Dark Side, and that's discipline. Oh, yeah, the timing, because a lot of the songs are so slow. Yeah. It's giant, 
shine on you, Grady Diamond. 47 beats a minute. Is that all? Yeah, 6-8. Yeah. And... I'll show you around my kit then. Let's go. Hi, my name is Tony Norris. I'm the drummer with Dark Side of the Wall. Welcome to my happy place. So, what I have in front of me and to the side of me, these are called rototoms, and these are for the beginning of time. symbols and they're paste 2002 these are a vintage 1970s again and they have a rippled effect on the bottom bottom symbol so, so when the two symbols are put together it, it lets the, the air out so it's not it's a nice crisp sound this symbol is a uh, 17 inch just a studio crash and I just use it for a crash and catch which is that sort of effect. This symbol is a, uh, a Zildjian, very old, 70s again. It's got a tiny, tiny bell, and this is a crash ride. So you can ride the symbol and crash it. This little symbol is a 12 inch, called a 12 inch splash. And this, this I had to buy just for fearless when you see me uh, play fearless on stage, you'll just see me. This is a, a 18 inch paste crash. It's a really, really heavy, big sound. So I use that when I want big crashes probably with another symbol as well. This symbol is a um, Sabian evolution crash and it's much warmer and can be played quite softly and give a, a wash underneath like vocal harmonies or when it doesn't need to be big but it just needs a, a wash underneath, underneath something else. This is my right symbol again. Um, it's a 20 inch Zildjian it's um, again from the 70s, it's a big old rock ride and uh, I have a, a, a damper in the belt to, to, to close, close it down a little. And this is a Sabian 20 inch ozone crash. It's um, in between a china and a crash symbol. It's much more, not as trashy as a, a china symbol. Really nice. Now my snare drum. It's a Ludwig 400. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. And the skins I use a Evans hydraulic. Uh, I use the hydraulic on all the the uh, the batter heads on the the drums. But this this snare drum is just wow. It's been with me. Wow. Brilliant. This is a 12 by 8. Tom Tom, Rack Tom. This is a 13 by 9 Rack Tom, and this is a 16 by 16 Floor Tom. And down there is a 22 inch by 14 bass drum. Right over here, we have my metronome. It's all connected into my uh, personal in ear monitor amp. And with my in your monitors and moving up to this this is the SPDS and this is where I trigger all the samples for things like keep talking
for the next sample. For millions of years, mankind lived just like the animals. It doesn't have to be like this. All we need to do is make sure we keep talking. Then, of course. Sometimes it's really easy to miss the pads when you're in the middle of a, a frantic fill and stuff like that and you hit the wrong pad and you get seven musicians turn around and look at you going, what are you doing? Right, my bass drum is a 22 by 14 inch bass drum and I use a Evans EMAD 2 for the batter head and an Evans Rezo head for the front. It's ported obviously as you can see. Right, my drum store, we said we'd come back to this, it's a tactile bass drum monitor. So that, which means that every time I strike the bass drum, it, it comes up through your bones and you can feel it. And before I actually got this piece of kit, I was using in-ear monitors and I couldn't hear the bass drum. I could only just feel what I was playing. But now, with this and the in-ear monitors, I've never heard and felt the bass drum so, so much. It's just brilliant, all the years I've been playing. I don't know how I ever manage without it. It's a great piece of kit. <laughs> Have I ever owned a budgie? Certainly not. Budgie smugglers. Uh, but I once, I once had a, a white mouse called Old Derb the First, if that counts. Right, that's the end of my uh, little tour. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Hope you have too. And hopefully we'll see each other again soon at a gig. Real soon, hopefully. Stay safe, everybody. Back to you, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Tony. That's brilliant, mate. Really appreciate that. God knows how long it took you to set your drum kit up in the confined spaces of your living room there. Um, good luck taking it all down again. Well, that shows you that there's a whole lot more goes into playing the drums in a Pink Floyd band than you would expect. Uh, what a setup he's got there. And, by the way, doesn't he come across as a man who's totally in love with his drum kit? Uh, thanks again, Tone. Um, we'll wrap it up here I think as ever please leave comments and subscribe to us on YouTube um, you can still get in touch with us email us at band at Pink Floyd Tribute we'll answer any responses and we look forward to producing vlog number five in the next week or so uh, anyway thank you again everybody and we'll see you next week in the meantime stay safe everyone shine on <laughs>